The second time I fell off a waterfall, I was in love. I was ambling down the Appalachian Trail, which is really the only thing you can do on the Appalachian Trail if you don't have a purpose. I knew that my relationship with this beautiful woman in question was in jeopardy because I viewed 3,000 miles as a destination and she viewed it as an experience. We were 750 miles into the journey when we came to a falls, which had a 20-foot vertical drop. My masculinity had been called into question. The jury was still out on whether I was man enough to continue this journey with her. And so I climbed the falls for a photo opportunity, one that I regret stupendously now. There are a series of photos of me clambering up and when my shirt comes off, as it was this day, the result is decidedly negatory. As I climbed, all skin, white, untanned to the top of these falls, the pictures grow more and more desperate, more and more shaky as she realizes that I am doing this for her, and this will not end well. There is a picture as I turn around at the top of the falls. I am smiling. I don't want to be smiling. There are no more pictures because I fell the 20 feet. And when I came to at the bottom of the falls and stumbled out all heroic masculinity, ready for the verdict to be passed on my ability to continue on this trek, I looked at my right hand, which was fine, and I looked at my left hand, which was mangled. She suggested immediately that we continue the 62 miles to the next city I remonstrated we should go the three miles back to the nearest road and take me to a hospital. She thought this was an inconvenience on in our trip. We ended up at the hospital where the doctor, after many x-rays, said, I think everything will be all right. He left the room, turned around, and almost as an aftersight said, as long as you're not a musician, laughed and left. <laughs> she leaned in close to me, took both of my hands, and when I had stopped moaning in pain, she said, just give it up which reminded me of something I had heard before. My grandfather taught me to play the piano, and he taught me the one four, which is that all melodies want to go to the four, which is the close to resolution. They want to go to the five, linger there for no more than four measures, and resolve back to the one. If they go to the six, then you're playing tricks on your audience, and you should just give it up. <laughs> My grandfather taught me nothing that I understood at the age of nine, but at the age of 23 it all came clear, and it is who I consider to be me now. When I was 11 he died very unexpectedly. He liked to feed geese, and as he fed them he did it with his hands barefoot. He stepped, interestingly, on a piece of goose shit, which can give you pneumonia, which can cause you to die. Six months later, my grandmother, who was well on his way to following him into the void, took me aside at an event at which I had won something unremarkable at my age. And she leaned into me and said, I hear you have a new teacher now, one that had been thrust on me by my parents that thought maybe a musician was what I should be. And I said, yes, I have a new teacher. And she said, I bet you couldn't wait for him to die so you could start to learn. Wow. And it was the first time I had smelled bourbon. And she grabbed both of my hands, which thankfully at the age of 11 both worked, and said, just give it up. She followed him into death three months later. I continued to play the piano. And, and I am pleased that now it is my primary source of income, which I do as a tribute to my grandfather and to no one else. And as a small postscript, to the story I share, I left that woman before the hand had healed. Wow. Beautiful, Ryan. Beautiful. Oh,